Okay, this is our third part of 23.2. Um, we're going to do another short reading from ICIDX about interest groups. Some of this is going to be a bit of repeated information, talking about um, PACs and super PACs. A lot of them kind of relate, but this is going to be talking more about interest groups in general. Interest groups, um, they're groups of people with the same interest, um, and they use strategies to influence our government. The amount of influence that interest groups have on government is a major concern for many people today. At the same time, however, millions of citizens rely on interest groups to make their voices heard. Kind of in the way, you know, we talked about political parties. In some ways, political parties are a bad thing, right? They prevent compromise. Sometimes um, politicians put their political party before the country. You know, we know Washington didn't like political parties. But on the other hand, Political parties do all kinds of good things for government. They help government work. Similar to interest groups, right? Interest groups on one way are bad because they um, they influence the government sometimes in ways that we think are inappropriate, but also sometimes it helps people get their voices heard when they collect themselves into a group. Interest groups hire lobbyists to meet with members of the government and discuss the issues and concerns. When you lobby someone, you're like proposing your ideas. You're trying to get them to see your point of view. Lobbyists say that their job is to provide information to decision makers. The information lobbyists provide has been carefully chosen to persuade the audience to take one side of an issue. Lawmakers have to be both aware of the bias in the lobbyist messages and consider both sides before they make a decision. During elections, some interest groups may endorse or officially support candidates. Groups choose a candidate to support based on what, can, what the candidate has done in the past or where the candidate stands on issues important to the group. Once the candidate is in office, he or she may introduce new bills, support existing laws, or use influence on important committees. In return, the interest group encourages its members to vote for that person in the election. In addition, interest group, the interest group may donate money to the candidate's election campaign. That would be in the, in the realm of a Packers group. Pack. Interest groups raise money. Right? Money makes it all go around. They raise money to support their efforts to influence the government. Some people worry that interest groups can buy candidates by contributing lots of money to the candidate's election campaign. Once in office, such a candidate might be more concerned about pleasing the interest group than representing their own voters. The government addresses this concern with strict rules about how interest groups uh, may collect and donate money to political campaigns. Those that do must form a political action committee, or now later a super PAC, that follows strict government rules about giving money to political candidates. Not everyone agrees, though, on what kinds of rules interest groups should have to follow. Some fear that campaign financing laws actually limit the ability of people to support the cause they care about. Think about that Citizens United case. Others, however, fear that interest groups have grown to have more influence on the government than the real public at large. They believe that the groups should be controlled. The debate continues and some interest groups and wealthy individuals who support them find loopholes or ways around the campaign finance laws. So there's a few strategies that interest groups have for influencing the government. They can inform the public and elected officials about issues that matter to the group. So for example, if you, um, if the state of Rhode Island was maybe planning on, you know, paving, build, building a dam, whatever, building a dam and Save the Bay did not, Save the Bay, right, the organization for Narragansett Bay, they didn't like that, right, because it would negatively impact the environment. Save the Bay could use its funds and its scientists, the people who work with them, to not only tell the politician, hey, when you vote for building this dam, here's what you're really voting for. You're voting for the disruption of fish, travel you're going to take a beautiful environment and make it ugly you're go you know the cost of these materials you know we can't afford the cost you know the long-term environmental hazards right the group could inform the politicians that they could say hmm, now i do think i'm going to vote against this dam or the influence groups could also be using their money to run all kinds of advertisements telling the public why the dam is bad if the public sees these ads and feels informed and now they've changed their mind, they might also contact their elected officials. Hey, I, you know, now that I'm more informed on the issue, I don't want you to approve this dam. 
The second topic is donating money, right? They can donate money to political campaigns in exchange for support by the candidate. So, you know, Save the Bay through their super PAC could donate their $5,000 to my campaign. And then I would say, you know what? I'm not going to build the dam. And as an interest group, you guys have been a good partner to me. You're using your money to support my campaign. I will be pro-environment. Also, they can endorse a candidate running for office and suggest that the group's members vote for him or her. With Save the Bay, there's tons of members, right? People uh, sign up to be a member of the Save the Bay Institute. Save the Bay could say, we endorse, you know, Paige McClatchy for Senate because she will support our environmental work. People who are, you know, related or affiliated to our members of Save the Bay would say, oh, I like what Save the Bay does. If Save the Bay supports this politician, that's how I'm going to vote for the election. Now, this example of Save the Bay, I think most of you would agree, that's a really kind of good interest group. But there are other lots of bad interest groups. Um, I'm thinking in particular, like one of the biggest ones is like tobacco companies, right? Tobacco, smoking tobacco and vaping is really, really bad for your body. The growing of tobacco is harmful for the environment. But those interest groups, they want to pressure politicians to, you know, to not raise the, the smoking age, to not ban flavored jewel pots. So interest groups can kind of go both ways. So that's what I've got for you on interest groups. Uh, next week, we're going to look at propaganda um, as well as some current events. It's always hard for me to exit this. Okay. Adios.